Before Islam, I never actually felt a need to create a connection between me and God. However, being raised in a Cuban family, I considered myself Catholic because I was baptized, I went to church, and I believed in the Bible. However, what my family actually practiced is called the Law of Lokumi, also known as Santeria. Santeria is an African religion brought to the New World by slaves, later mixed with Catholicism. Uh, Santeria, is, Santeria is practiced in, in the Caribbean, particularly in Cuba. Santeria is a diffused monotheism religion. It holds that there is a God, but that there are Orishas who are spirits or deities that serve as intercessors between the individual and the one higher power. The Orishas are all different. They all have different attributes to, and require the believer to engage in different types of activities. Santeria was the first religion that captured my interest. I liked to read about the different orishas or saints, their stories, what they liked, what they disliked. It was fascinating to me. However, reading about Santeria never made me want to be more practicing. I viewed my religion as more of a traditional Afro-Cuban thing. I read and read and memorized various chants in the Yoruba language. I felt I was really getting in touch with my history. Not many people can say that they know exactly where they come from, and I felt I felt empowered by knowing and following a religion that not many people practiced. To me, it was special because my ancestors practiced it. It made me me, or so I thought. But when I asked my family questions or made comments about how some things didn't make sense to me, they would totally disregard my statements. I wondered why there's no concept of hell in Santeria. Why do our loved ones have to continue living amongst us when they pass? Won't they ever rest? Why does God need them or Orishas as saints to serve as intercessors? What does it say about the life we're living? Are we ever going to be held accountable for our actions? What celebrates the good and the bad? Or what separates the good and the bad when it's all over? Why are rewards and punishments only a matter of importance in the present life? This wasn't the case in Catholicism, so I felt a lot of confusion. Because emphasis was placed on being Catholic in public, I decided to read the Bible. And after looking at Catholicism, Santeria, and the actual Bible, I realized that these were all at odds with each other. How can I be a believer of all of them at once? In reality, I was dealing with theologies that didn't mix at all. My whole belief system looked like a huge contradiction. For example, idol worship is a sin in the Bible. God never said he had partners or helpers. Why am I turning to saints and orishas for help? Also, who exactly am I worshiping when I worship a saint? Some of the saints in Catholicism aren't even mentioned in the Bible. For example, Saint Barbara, which is Chango and Santeria. She's nowhere to be found in the Bible. Adding to that, the Trinity, the contradicting verses, the problem of always receiving an emotional response to questions that needed rational answers. My perception of religion re remained the same until my second semester at college. I decided that I would focus on languages. I wanted to challenge myself by studying a really difficult language. So panel, I chose Arabic. <laughs> While taking that class, I started looking into Arab culture, and through some research, the topic of Islam arose. I didn't know much about Islam, but I know about Muslims. I saw them every day. I knew they were, they were very serious about their religion, but I felt Islam was an unfair religion. I felt Islam created divisions between people. I believe Muslims felt they were superior to non-Muslims and considered Muslims devilish people. I felt, I felt they were isolated because their religion told them to stay as far away from non-Muslims as possible. They had their community and I had mine, although we lived in the same neighborhood. I wondered why they would stare at the ground and never say hi to me as they walked by. I didn't believe in what, um, oh, sorry. now I understand I didn't dress like they did. I didn't believe in what they believed in. But how were we ever to create understanding between each other if they never spoke to me and they were so unfriendly towards me? But now I look back and I think that wasn't Islam. It was not Islam. A practicing Muslim has excellent manners. Muslims believe in tolerance. 
because Islam teaches them to be tolerant. In the Holy Quran, there is a chapter dedicated to non-Muslims, Surat Al-Kafirun. And the last verse in that chapter says, Lekum dinukum wa yadin. Unto you your religion and unto me mine. To you be your way and to be me mine. So why would such an intolerant religion have such words in their holy book? Alhamdulillah, I didn't let the actions of a few people stop me from trying to understand their religion. No one should let the actions of a few people ruin their perception of Islam. Indeed, Islam is perfect. Muslims are not. As I began doing my research on Islam, my mind was filled with misconceptions. They came from the media, from friends and family, and from what I myself created as a reaction to what I saw or what I thought I saw. I don't know what to say in reference to why, to exactly why I chose to search the truth about Islam, but I did. I simply felt a deep inclination towards knowing the truth about Islam and Muslims and Allah God to whom he wills. I really wasn't looking for a religion. I wasn't looking for a new way of life, but Islam gained my, gained my admiration, my respect. I really fell in love with Islam. Not only did my heart fall in love with Islam, but my mind did, and that was important. I loved Islam because the theology was clear. God is one. I loved Islam because the prophets I already believed in were Muslim. Muslim is the one who submits to the will of God. I didn't have to forsake my belief in the prophets because they were all in the Holy Quran. And seeing a Muslim pray while remembering how Abraham, Moses, and Jesus prayed, peace be upon them, prayed, how they, fell in the how, how they fell on their faces in prostration in the Bible softened my heart. Reading about how there's no compulsion in religion opened my eyes to see that this is the true religion, a religion that rejects oppression, the one true God, the, judge, the, the God that judges intention, the God that multiplies good deeds and easily forgives bad deeds. He is the most merciful. Islam, a religion that grants inheritance and divorce rights to women, this religion declared that women were allowed to vote over 1,400 years ago, when it was just in the 1920s that women were allowed to vote in this country. Speaking of women in Islam, women are always viewed as oppressed. But to me, but trust me, women in Islam are really appreciated and respected. Did you know that the first Muslim at the time of the Prophet was a woman? Her name was Khadija. Did you know that the first person to die for Islam was a woman? Sumeya. She was killed for being a Muslim. The greatest scholar of Islam was a woman, Aisha. Another important woman in Islam is Nusayba bin Kaab, also known as Umm Umara, who served that war helping bandage the wounded, but that's not all she did. In a battle waged against Muslims, some soldiers neglected the Prophet's command, and they left their post. And this was a fatal error, and it caused many Muslims to panic and flee and retreat. The Prophet was left alone with just a few companions. Nusayba was among them. Nusayba ran up to defend the Prophet. She went forward with her sword and joined a small group who were standing right behind the Prophet. They were like a human shield protecting the Prophet against the opposition. Uh, opposition. It is reported that the battle was fierce and they, were, and they were fighting for their lives on foot while the opposition were all mounted. The Prophet, peace be upon him, noticed that she didn't have a shield and he said to one of the retreating men, give your shield to the one who is fighting. So the man handed Nusayba the shield, and she defended the Prophet, peace be upon him, with it. It's remarkable to know that she tried her absolute best to fight for what she believed in. Every time danger approached the Prophet, she was there protecting him. The messenger, peace be upon him, said, whenever I turned to my left or my right, I saw Nusayba fighting for me. Nusayba received the wound that ran across her shoulder. The blow left her unconscious in the battlefield. What's amazing to me is that when she woke up, the first question she had was, did the Prophet survive? No one thinks of women like Nusayba bin Kaab when they think about women in Islam. So the more I learned about Islam, the more I loved it. Little by little, all of the misconceptions faded away. So there came a moment when I started ask, asking myself some serious, serious questions. What are my actual beliefs? If I remain a Catholic or continue following my, what my African forefathers practiced, am I really doing the right thing? If I had to tell people about what I believed in, how would that go? What if my religion is the truth and the world doesn't know about it? If I had to explain my religion to others, would they be convinced? Would they be saved? Am I being saved? I realized that I wasn't really on the right path. I didn't have answers to whatever 
I didn't have answers, and whatever I said I believed in was full of contradictions, while Islam was pure. All one has to do is examine the Quran, the way it's been preserved, the linguistic beauty, its clarity, its correctness. It is the word of God. I really began to appreciate Islam. I would see a Muslima in hijab walking down the street, and I'd say salam to her. I felt I really wanted to wish peace upon her. I knew what she believed in, what she does, what she doesn't do, and I loved her for it. I loved Islam. I began to carry myself as a Muslim without even realizing it. I remember one day my friends at the philosophy club asked me to join along, to, to tag along as we headed to the MSA meeting for a little debate. And subhanAllah, I found myself defending the Muslim side in every argument. I remember my friends would give me looks like, are you with us or with them? With time, I felt it would be a huge um, injustice upon myself if I continued to live my life the way I did without taking my shahada. The way I behaved changed. The way I saw the world changed. I had Islam in my heart. Islam gave me confidence, and I felt I was walking on solid ground. No one could sway me because I had facts. Too many, too many of us walk around ready to fight for something we don't really believe in, professing to be something we know nothing about. No one could claim something without me responding, where is your proof? No one could try to shake my faith because now I follow a religion that encourages you to think, to put words into practice, a religion that is created by the one, by the one true God. I began practicing without my family knowing. Everything was fine until the day I wore hijab. Then it really became evident that I was Muslim. I made a lot of changes and I know it really frustrated my family. I tried my best to explain to them why I changed, why they should change. I tried to explain to them why Islam is the true religion. I didn't understand why I received so many react negative reactions, why I still receive negative reactions. If the one you love worships the creator and not the creation, isn't that a good thing? If the one you love has her priorities in order, doesn't drink, smoke, steal, or commit adultery, how is that bad? How is it wrong to worship the Lord, who is God, the, Abra the God of Abraham, the one whom you claim to admire so deeply? How is it wrong to pray, to pray the way that he prayed, the way Moses and Jesus prayed, as illustrated in the Bible? How is it bad to cover, to seek respect from the opposite gender, to not be viewed as a person who can be catcalled, but as a woman of honor? What's wrong with covering as the Virgin Mary does in images that were, by the way, not created by Muslims? Am I wrong for doing all of this? Are these actions of ancient Middle Eastern customs or have human beings stopped taking God's word seriously?